was it? Hi. Hello. Hello, hi Brian. Hello. Hi everybody. Hello. Hi Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people still call me that, you know. I'm trying to find to prop this up properly. Hold on just a minute. Yay! Friday. King Hua, you look gorgeous, man. Hey. You can talk yourself. Look, casual Friday. Actually having some Da Paolo pizza, and I'm just gonna continue to eat and do an IG live all at the same time. You should be taking nasi lemak pizza. Um, <laughs> is there really a nasi lemak pizza? Yeah, there is. There is. They're where promoting. Can... They're promoting it like hell on TV. You're kidding me! Like, where yeah. can I? Pizza Hut. You're kidding me! I'm going to order. That's yeah. what I'm gonna. Yeah. So, are we waiting for Yao to come in? Yes, we are. Ah, Yao. Mm. And 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 I think he's he's uh going to be quite busy for him today because uh, from what I understand, he's dropping his new song uh, at nine o'clock, uh, which is actually a remake of "Hopelessly Devoted to You" by no. O N J. Yes, way. So we're just waiting for him. But in the meantime, there's quite a lot of people joining in. Hello, everyone. Thank you for Hi. joining us. Thank you for joining. In case the, 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 the female face on, on this chat so far looks familiar, she's, of course, our very own Tan Kheng Kwa. She's Who's back that? in Singapore. Are we talking about Aloysius? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I'm not the girl. You know, the lady here in the, the threesome is, of course, Kheng Hua and... Uh, uh, like you're, you're not having your, your summer break, isn't it? Back in Singapore? It's called a hiatus. So I finished season one. Of and then, um, then I think this is the, it's normal for filming television in North America. And then you have a big summer break. And everybody goes off. They go back to their own states, their own cities. And they, their families. And then we're very lucky because we got um, picked up. So um, we will be going back to Vancouver, um, I think the 2nd of September. And then we start shooting again until end of April next year. And then I'll be, you know, having another summer break. Lah. So it's kind of like a, I mean, that's the pattern, lah, you know. Yeah. So I understand that you know when you come back to Singapore, you had to go like go through a uh, seven, fourteen day, twenty one day. How long was your how long was your jail time? So my wait, how long was my my quarantine? Is it? Mm. So when I first came back to Singapore, the original contract was fourteen days, and then I think it was something twelve days was pulled out to do another because that was the time that COVID yeah. Hi, Yao is here. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, Yao. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. hi, hi, hi. How are you guys? Oh, we're good. We're good. No, it's okay. And, and you know, I, I think today you're dropping your, your new song, right? Which is uh, hopelessly yeah. devoted to you. Yes, yes. I dropped the song with Aisha. Aisha has this. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we gotta we gotta have uh, a listen earlier, and and it's it's like wow, it sounded great. Oh, thank you, thank you. 
It means a lot. Thank you so much. Wow. Okay. Really, uh, so- no cracking singer, Elijah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> voice is like out of this world, also. Yeah, no, especially the second part of the chorus where the both of you are going at it, you know, it's like in and right. out, in and out, and wow, it's like magic. Yeah, yeah, it's really like mm. an energy. Mm. Yeah. Well, we hope that works for you, and and everybody just kind of likes that, uh, especially the younger set. I'm not sure about the older set of people because, mm. um, I guess you know some of them would still be, uh, more into you know the original version, but I think the two right. can exist side by side, and it's it's just yeah, great. Sure. It's, yeah, totally. Yeah. Agree. I think I think. Like I think we even the the we did this cover like, like we did this cover to actually you know pay tribute to kind of like the oldies you know what I mean so like trying to reimagine the cover the song in a way so like I guess yeah it, it went well you know <laughs> yeah well coming from an oldies station I think it's really appreciated right. Well okay well thank you all so much for joining us for this session really um maybe before we continue just to uh, remind. Um, uh, Koei, that you might want to mute uh, the other mic so that it doesn't sound like we're in a, an ever looping circle here. Um, but let me see now. Oh, okay. So today, uh, very thankful to have the both of you here. And um, you know, the the title essentially is embracing our golden years, building a more appreciative and inclusive society for all. And as you know, you know, we are Vintage Radio, and and it's about our seniors. And you know what we see that's coming in the future, and and I guess uh, yes, that's right. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> Yao, you are the youngest here, by the way. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, here would be where I think the pressure is on you guys because in the next ten years, if you look at the numbers that's coming out, you know, as far as statistics statistics go, right? Um, you know, four in ten uh, Singaporeans by the year twenty thirty is going to be a silver, sixty five and above. Four in ten. Right. That means a quarter of of Singaporeans walking around, they're going to be silver in sixty five. Uh, you know, sixty five and above. And and I'm going to be part of that group, or quite right. near to it, lah. Right. Um. The the pressure on on the younger set and the rest of Singapore is going to be quite tremendous. You know, we some people call it the silver tsunami. I think we'd like to call it, you know, the the rising tide of silver rather because this is not exactly a bad thing, right? Growing old. Um, you know, it's it's natural. Every one of us will be old one day, right? You know, it's just that some will reach it earlier, yes. some are there, uh, some will be there later, right? So, um, and and looking at some of the numbers as well, we're looking at at you know projected. The fact is that one in ten senior is likely to have some form of dementia, not like full blown or anything, but you know the onset beginning a little bit again there. And then, uh, if you take that number and you look at the population, by the year twenty thirty, we have about one hundred and fifty over thousand senior citizens in Singapore that's wow. likely to have dementia. That's a lot, yes, my man. Yeah. You're right. That's a lot. I'm you know, in the the reality of the situation, I know. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I don't mean to give you sleepless nights, but I think what no. we want to <laughs> do, what well, what we want to do really is to raise the awareness so that. Each and every one of us can can, in the words of of uh, Speaker Tan Chuan Jin, who was on last week, you know, is to take ownership, right? Is to take ownership and and really start doing something about uh, what's going to come uh, ahead of us, right? So, which is why we are having this conversation, talking to both yourself and King Hua, you know, um, and and through your influence, through your reach, also to your followers and all this is really very much to encourage everybody. Maybe we can also share. The experiences that we have, right, um, in dealing with our seniors in our circles and all this, um, right. you know, what we see or what we can do, how we as individuals can actually take ownership to have a, a more inclusive society where, you know, old is gold and, and it's not just, oh, they're a troublemaker or, oh, yeah, yeah, build more, um, you know, uh, nursing homes and that's it. No, we can't. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. It's going to be, be more than just nursing homes. It has to be more of like we connect and then we try to build bridges, right? Like, Talking even like small things like talking to our families and just trying to understand each other better. Like you know, I think like that's that's quite a, a big issue that you know a lot of us Singaporeans don't really talk about. You know, like the, it really boils down to the family also. You know, like how we interact with our parents and you know it's it's yeah it's it's, it's pretty deep rooted. But you know, I, I you know so even for myself like I try to work work on it by myself at home. You know, it all starts from the family. So yeah. Yeah. Well, um, interestingly that you should bring that up because. You know what you're saying. Um, if 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 what I understand is of you is correct, 
your mom has an influence on you in terms of music, right? She plays the pipa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huge, yeah. huge uh, impact. Yeah. Yeah. How, she, yeah. Yeah. So how, I mean, you know, how do you interact with her? You know, when it comes to your music and and her liking of music, and how how do your worlds inter intertwine? Yeah, so that's a very good question because, like, um, I I guess I would say my relationship my relationship with my mom is just is is really special. It's like I'm sure like it's different for everyone, but like for me, like music was really like a catalyst that really like like gel us together because the moment I was born, she was already a, a professional musician. So like. I grew up with music, and like I guess over time, like um, music has always been there in my life. So I can't, I can't escape, I can't escape it. So, and I think other than just like being around music, like um, I, I saw music as like an escape for me. So like for many youths, I think like we we tend to gravitate towards something that you know, um, that that we we always see on a daily basis. So like for me, it was music. So I guess that's how like. Um, I bonded with my mom, and um, because my mom is a single single mom, uh, she she doesn't really have a lot of time to you know um, how how to put this. She doesn't really mm. uh, has a lot of time to spend with me to say you know like so like when whenever we have time to spend with each other, it's always through like music and just like playing together. And I would just like sing sing to her, her playing because she plays the pipa in the Chinese orchestra. So. Yeah, so small things like that, but I think, um, yeah, it's 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 just how it is, lah. Music has always been there, yeah, in my life. Yeah. Great, great. Um, and you know, moving from you to Kinghua, I mean, Kinghua, if I if I got it correctly, your mom just celebrated her eighty fifth birthday, right? Yeah. Yeah. How, how how do you bridge that? Because you've got your younger daughter, and then you've got your 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 mom as well, you know. How do you get the two of them to talk together um, and and interact with each other, know each other better, and you know, how 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 would you deal with that, or how do you deal with that having to fly back and forth as well? You know, guys, I think I have a very different attitude towards um, this issue. The first thing I is I've never thought of myself senior. I just think of myself as king. I just think of my mom as my mom. Yeah. I don't like to talk about the concept of how to relate to um, an older person because how I relate to an older person is exactly the same as how I relate to a younger person. Exactly the same as how I relate to um, a baby. You try to find connections, and I think one of the First steps towards inclusivity here in Singapore, which I would like to encourage, is to get rid of all these labels. I don't like the labels of veteran or that I'm a senior. I'm an actor, I'm Kang, I'm a woman, I'm Chinese, I'm Singaporean. You know, and I would like to be celebrated for、um, that are worth being celebrated, not because I'm older or younger or middle aged or. Whatever I, I would like to be celebrated for, whatever you think is worth celebrating in me. So I actually think that it's very divisive to use these terms. Your senior, how do we relate to seniors? I don't think we're getting the message across right. We should just try to relate. We should just try to communicate to everybody. You know, I actually don't think that vintage radio. Is、um, for seniors. Vintage radio is for everybody, and I think that way that it should be marketed. You see, and、um, I I think th- only then the people who、um, run, you know, everything here in Singapore, only then will you really become an inclusive. Society, when you stop trying to label people, lah. So, so for example,、um, with my mom, I never had to.、Um, I never had to think about the concept to relate to her. I simply relate to her.、Um, so, there are days that I relate to her better, 
and there are days that I don't. I love her very much. I loved her when she was young, a young mother. I loved her when I love her when she's an older mother, you know. Sometimes she gets irritated with me and that's not because she's old or young or whatever. She just irritated because I gave her something to hate it about. <laughs> I do think so that um, if we start thinking about communication in this way, celebrating whatever worth celebrating, then I also think that we become a very rich society, you know. We become much, much less ageist. Because if you were to celebrate my work, for example, okay, as opposed to just celebrating my age, then you are introducing my work to everybody. And then my work lives on, you know. Um, people who like my work, whether or not I was a young actor or whether I'm an older actor, will like my work. No matter whether they are young or old or whatever. My work is not for juniors or seniors. I'm an artist. My art is to frame life. And it's for everybody. And that's why I think, you know, I mean, that's the philosophy that I would like to have. It's certainly the philosophy that I live by, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's beautiful, though. It's a that's very beautiful way of thinking, yeah. I things out, you know. And, and here I am meeting Yao. And um, I'm interested now in uh, listening to your music. And it's not wow. because... You know, it's not because of your age and it's not because of anything. It's just that by serendipity, I'm meeting you here right. on this yeah. live. I'm now curious about you. You know, I'm going to now listen to your music. It's nothing yeah. to do. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it a lot. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's really true, like talking and connecting. But through that, we can really find that, you know, that we all share something in common, right? Just like, just that need to to just be with each other and just understand each other, yeah. That's right. I totally so agree with what you're saying. Well, I have friends, friends. And my friends are from like, you know, like my like early 20s all the way to, you know, 70s. They're mm. friends. My, the way that I became friends with them has nothing to do with my age. I didn't wake up one day and go like, oh, I think I want to have Young. No. Because if you're young and boring, chances are, I'm not going to be, off, you know, you're, we're, we're going to have, if we don't connect, we're going to not be friends anyway, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, my mic was on mute. So, Brian, what about you? How, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, you know, with what King Wai has just mentioned, you know, let's, let's take away all the, the, the labels of, of age and all that, right? Well, um, before, any, before anything else, uh, I'd like to say uh, well done, King Wa, for making it in America. <laughs> I really take my hat off to you. It's not I'm such easy. a big fan, uh, King Wa. It's not I'm easy, but of... I tell you, you did, the, you did Singapore proud. And also, <laughs> Yao, congratulations. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah, you, thank you, you thank are you. reviving some of the old favorites. Yeah, or yeah. 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 Hopelessly Greece, devoted yeah. to you. Yeah. Turning into a modern anthem for yeah. timeless romance. Yeah. So it just goes to prove that, uh, you know, some of the best music comes from back then. Mm. Right, King Wan? Can't, you can't deny that. Can't deny that, yeah. <laughs> it comes from music, music transcends all the, all the period, all the time. You know? Right. Yeah. But what, what, made, what uh, made Universal uh, ask you to do that? Um... I guess it was it was something that was really like spontaneous. Like honestly, I was always a fan of Aisha, and like Aisha, I didn't I didn't know that Aisha actually knew me. So like when when we started to like work with each other, and she told me like I'm such a big fan, and like you know I was like oh my god, the feelings mutual, you know, <laughs> like as an underground like uh, artist coming up, um, the fact that I got to sing with her is just amazing. And like yeah, I think Universal really did a great thing by putting us together. Like I feel like we yeah. made something really special, and I think. 
like even the fact that you know we have a like just to put it bluntly we have a chinese dude and a a, a malay woman doing song together and we are singing mm-hmm. and we are connecting through music that's that's like something that you know we should all embrace like this we don't we don't yeah. we, we shouldn't see any labels you know like like we we, do, we don't see like like what king was said just now yeah aisha of course is aisha aziz aisha and aziz, i think yeah. and she's so she was the, the winner in some contest right yeah like, aisha yeah and uh, but is is this uh, only the one song or is this uh, the forerunner of an album uh no, i i don't know no <laughs> who knows right like uh i had a lot of fun working with her so like if she wants to continue working with me like i'll be i'll be so down lah like honestly <laughs> but for as of now we only have this song this song is like yeah we just put it out this song <laughs> yeah right, right. so Let's sorry i for let all of you astray uh, because aloy asked me whether i you know uh, what are my thoughts after the two of you started off uh i'm with you all the way king wa i don't look at age in fact i consider myself 25 <laughs> <laughs> with so many years of experience and uh, I treat all my friends just as friends not mm. this old man here or this young boy there no they're all my friends irrespective of age or whatever you know so age is no barrier for me not at all mm. Well that's 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 actually good to hear from from you know three different uh, sorry for labeling but three different age groups you know three <laughs> different perspectives and all that and and I think it's great that you know we try and remove the labels and all this that's definitely a step towards being inclusive or more to to have a more inclusive society but I think um the other thing is also you know, what we do need to to be able to do I suppose is to recognize and and um you know encourage everybody to take ownership and and step up to help you know um i i i would say you know this this experience that i've seen for myself i mean i've i've gone through where you know we were walking um at at bedok in the change and all this and you know it came across that there's this gentleman who was in a wheelchair and he's just there under the hot sun trying to move up a little ramp but you know people walk by and and nobody's lending a hand to help or, or to ask but if he needs help you know So um I would say my wife gave me a nudge and I was like okay let's let's go and see if he needs he needs help. And the truth of the matter is he needed help. You know and and uh, all we did was like uh, uncle do you need help? Say yeah this too steep for me. So we just kind of pushed him along until you know we crossed the road and then he's like oh okay okay I can take from here already. Thank you thank you. So I think that is something that um we'd love to see more of of Singaporeans you know um I hate to come back to the point that you know we we do have a situation where more and more people will need some kind of help along the way and um yes every one of us have a life and we're busy and we're moving from point to point and all this but do you see um you know is there a way that we can all you know start going like okay let's slow down a bit let's open our eyes let's let's take our eyes off the phone for a while you know instead of walking like like that right um and and just do something good one one good deed a day or try and help somebody one is is that too much to ask for i don't know it's is that on my part you know am i asking too much what do you think yeah um i think that's definitely not too much to ask that's almost to me, to me personally i think that's like basic like empathy like when you see someone in need you 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 help and like i think the issue the the real issue here i feel is the fact that a lot of us like you we are so focused on like um social media and like you know just everything that we 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 see on on the internet and like because i think i think like we are all fed the uh we are all fed the 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 idea of being successful and you know from young we are brought up i would say like in singapore like we are brought up to chase the money and you know just to be successful in everything um and i think because of that like a lot of us um we we tend to lose that uh how do i put this um that connection with our parents and you know just with family members and i'm not saying for every all of us but i'm saying like major, i would say like quite a lot of us lah so i think um them did did i did, I, did I answer the question <laughs> i'm not sure if i answered the question but uh, no, no no i think i think yeah, it's I'm, right I'm for yeah. 
for you to actually share the fact that you know um, the pressure is on you guys, and I think you've got a song around it as well. <laughs> you know, I can't yeah, say yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And and you know the the pressure is there for everybody to succeed and and do better and all this. And I think all of us want to, but it's just the pressure of 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 this you know that kind of detracts us from seeing uh, maybe if I can use the term from just slowing down and smelling the roses. Right, know? right. Just so, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, um, what Kingwa, what, how, any, any inputs from you? Like, I mean, you've got a daughter that's growing up, and you know, she's all, up, I would suggest that she would be feeling the pressure as well as as what Yao has described. You know, how do you help her overcome that? You know, what, how's your engagement with her like to say, oh, you know, take it easy, or no, go for it. You know, how how would you handle that? I think that um, parenting uh, styles definitely play a part. So, for example, for me, I think my role as a parent has always been to just make sure that my kid has all the tools necessary to go out away from me and to contribute to the world in her chosen way and to do it in the best way that she can. I'm not saying that I guess everybody that works, that sort of philosophy works for everybody, but it certainly worked for me. It worked for me because ultimately my goal was to keep close to my child, you know? And one of the things that I decided would help my child be close to me is to not to show me who she is. But if you want your child to show you who they are, you cannot keep putting up walls between yourself and your child. And I think that you have to be able to, as parents, accept and not judge your children for being different people from you, for having different dreams, you know, and having different aspirations and different styles of achieving what it is that they want, you know. Um, it's easier said than done. But I think, again, here and there, coming from the arts has helped me a lot because I have to study, recreate, and um, figure out humanity all the time. As an actor, I cannot judge humanity too much. And if I keep working on that muscle, in my real life, I also try not to be a hypocrite, right? And and I should, with the people that are closest to me, also try not, um, try not to judge them too much. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't guide them. Because young people are young people and they haven't lived and they will make their mistakes just like how everybody makes mistakes and they have a lot of life to live. And depending on their DNA, some people may stumble more than other people, depending on some people may stumble more than other people. And here is where love, parenting, guidance, just nudge them a little bit back, you know, just give a little poke and then have the courage as an older person to stand back and let them try and find their footing. I think if everybody starts to think this way, you will get a community of people that are better able to take care of themselves no matter what age they are and that will have the peripheral vision to look around them and figure out what it is that somebody else may need. You know, if, if we become a lot more self-sufficient, you know, without our mates or whatever, you, know, you will have children who know how to wash their own clothes. They will grow up to be older people who know how to cook their own meals and know how to whatever, you know. And then when they're out, you know, because they're used to kind of like doing things on their own, Chances are people also get them, they will also know how to take care of their parents, push their parents' wheelchair, walk their, 
if you walk your own dog, your kid will also learn how to walk their own dog. But if you, if your dog is walked by your maid, <laughs> how do you expect your kid to grow up? You know, knowing how to do that. You know, so I, I do think it all starts from the home. You know. Yeah, definitely. Well, Brian, what do you think? I mean, being the most experienced person here, you know. You know. Uh, there's there's been a lot of uh, talk about this generation gap you know uh, the kids are all into social media and the parents don't even have a clue as to what's happening and all that you won't believe this little story i'm going to share with you now it happened just about a month ago i was at a restaurant and the uh, next table there was a family of five father mother and uh, the three kids, you know, two sons and a daughter, and they were all on the, the uh, what do you call this? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you see, uh, it's uh, it's uh, a guy who's out of uh, <laughs> social media. Okay, they were they were they were going through their their mobile phone, and they were I think you know trying to read some messages and what have you. And I thought that that was pretty rude, you know. So I said that to my wife and I says, what is this to come here instead of uh, having a little conversation that, uh, you know, that uh, they've, you know, they're just uh, in a world of their own. You know what happened along the way? They were all communicating with one another through what? their mobile phones. Oh and they, because as they went along, then they say, hey, I think the chicken for this one uh, is not bad. Uh, what do you think? And then they, th then they turn for that one exchange of a uh, couple of words and then back again. And they were all interacting with one another through their phone. Oh my God. Can you beat that? Now, what do you call that in today's age? What do you call that? At least you can say that the parents have caught up, right? <laughs> the parents have closed. Hybrid, the hybrid. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I so, think it's called hybrid connectivity. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It looks like nobody is communicate. They don't even know how to communicate vocally, you know. Well, I, actually, there's the other thing that I picked up on earlier that um, uh, Ting mentioned. You know, it's, it's like, uh, how do we guide? I mean, look, I, I think along the way, something's missing because... You know, today we, we, we see a lot of um, friction. We see a lot of people who is just me, myself and I and not really, you know, moving towards this inclusivity but actually tearing each other apart, right? As much as everybody tries to do their part to say, hey, let's be more inclusive, let's be more understanding all this. Is there something that, that can be done? Because we're trying to catch up in time as well. Because, uh, I'm, I'm looking at this number every day, 2030, you know, there's going to be that many people. And, and you know, personally, I feel that we're not there. We're not close to getting to a place where we can comfortably say that, hey, everybody's going to be living happily and, and you know, being able to help each other, right? Um, I, I'm sure, Brian, you remember the days of the kampong spirit. Now we've got no kampongs and, and we don't have the spirit. You know, how, how do we get that back? Because you know, it's, it's almost like trying to manufacture something that is so intangible um, you know, I, I don't know, do, do any one of you have any thoughts about how we can actually encourage that? Because what we're saying now is that, you know, we hope that people will change, you know, through, through maybe being a part of this and, and starting something where we can encourage people to improve and to be more inclusive. But it's also a short span of time before we hit 2030. And, you know, we don't want to be looking back at 2030 going, oh, you know, maybe we should have that campaign. I remember where the government, uh, you know. So, uh, you know, any thoughts about that? You know, short of actually going for another campaign. It's a bit scary. <laughs> Although having said that, today, I mean, at, at my age now, I still remember the courtesy campaign and the courtesy lion, right? Um, I think, Yao, you wouldn't have like, what, what's that? But, you know, back in the day when I was <laughs> when I was your age and younger, right? You know, there was this massive going, massive campaign going on about being courteous and all this, and we do see a change in people actually trying to be a little bit more courteous and all this. But after that, you know, after the campaign's over and then through the years, it's just like now everybody's, you know. I think I think like in general, like just a lot of the young people now just want to feel cool and like you know 
they want to escape into their own like fantasy world just for that minute because like we we're, we're always constantly like you know living in singapore i would say um a lot of, a lot of us don't feel like the uh, the the freedom that we are supposed to feel you know like like we we look, we look at places like america and stuff that and then we have that pre assumption that you know I'm, that's how freedom should look like you know and singapore we're not like that yet so for for a lot of us like when we look at out on the ground what 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 is the government doing and like when i mean when they do more of the cringier like more uh cringier stuff and which is not like you know uh, relatable for a lot of the youths they tend to to move away from it you know what i mean so like i think one thing that might help is to have more of like youth um and more of the relevant like you know uh people in the from the media or like artists or whatever musicians uh have them on board on on all these like you know talks and stuff and just have them be more in- included in the whole scheme of things like uh, whatever the the government is trying to do you know yeah so be basically you go ahead king one sorry for me aloysius i think the first is to stop thing so i actually disagree with you i actually feel that having spent so much time away and coming back to singapore i have felt nothing but kindness from a lot of singaporeans and i would really rather talk about what right rather than to talk about what you know we're doing wrong so for example my to- friends are always coming here to socialize right because going up absolutely none of them are rude very very behaved and yet funny aggressive and honest and i would really rather praise them, you know as a parent i've always felt that looking and optimizing what is doing well what is good is better than spending a lot of time on trying to fix and to to look at what is bad so for example um i made a choice a very long time ago both yubing and i made a choice a very long time ago that out of all the subjects that shian is doing right comment may not be naturally the best subject right but we didn't want to make the mistake of constantly concentrating on the bad chinese because the fact of the matter is that in this household right no matter how much we concentrate on that we all don't speak mandarin <laughs> we might well not talk too much about the mandarin okay we didn't say good or we didn't say bad but then all the things that she is very good at we kept saying wow that's good. keep going get better in this you know and then just keep the environment positive and bridging what is good maximizing you know everything that we're doing well and i must say having been away for such a long time my god love how everything is going in singapore man you see how fast we do everything i yeah. and you know when i the minute i flew down the sia hostesses on you know all wearing my the service still so good so kind you know and then the minute i entered changi airport they have so many ushers now to usher you to this station to get your pc test usher you to this station to go and check in everybody and i flew in something like past midnight it was like 1 a.m. everybody was so kind, so good the minute i went into the bus went into quarantine and all of these people are on the front line you know they were fantastic and then every time i had my pcr test it was fantastic and then i was in ion together with my daughter remember there was an ion cluster so she uh, and, yeah, yeah. and i said let's be good citizens 
let's go and get tested. So all the KTV people, please, let's, there's nothing to be afraid of. Go and get tested, okay? So we went to get tested. And my daughter had never had the PCR test before. And she was right next to me. And she was nervous, okay? And I could see from the corner of my eye, the young nurse, and the young nurse was stroking her head and saying, don't worry, you know, you're going to be okay. Just relax, just relax. And I just feel that's what we should be talking about, that we are doing things right now. How can we do it even righter, you know? Because I don't want to say anymore that Singaporeans are not courteous or whatever. I think they are. There are enough courteous. Now it's just, it's just how to be even better. We are already better. But now, how to be even better. You know what I mean? That's kind of how I feel, you know. I love it back home. Singapore is great. My well... Okay, well, I, I think you know you 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 hit a right note there, and and I don't think we we spend enough time celebrating the good, you know, and and, and naturally a lot of us kind of like kind of focus in and, and focus on something that's negative as well, because I guess it's a lot easier to to be yeah. negative, right? Negative um, that was a lot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's like hey, you know, as, especially when you look at social media and all this, there's a lot of hate still, you know, and yeah. and I, I guess one of the things that we should be preaching you know, or, or celebrating is love. And, and positivity as well, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't know, maybe one of the things that we can encourage people to do really is to post more about the good stuff that's happening rather than, you know, keep on posting about, oh, this one, uh, yo, whatever, I don't want to come in. I don't know. Um, but would, it, you, but would you also say that, like, if, if people don't, like, stand up and, like, you know, like, um, how, to, how to put it... Uh, like when there's there is a wrongdoing that's happening, and like when the youth try to stand up for 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 the for the wrongdoing that's happening, do you think that's like still an issue, or you think like that, um, like we should do more of that? Say that again, yeah. Um, like um, uh, for example, like the recent like all these uh, the the case with the 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 Chinese dude um, attacking the Indian guy for having the the mixed uh re- relationship, uh, so like. The social media had a huge frenzy about it, and like a lot of the youth stood stood up for this um, Indian Indian uh, couple, uh, mixed oh. relationship couple. Yeah, and I think stuff like that is not necessarily like good news, happy, hopeful news. But I feel like things like this are actually really just um, the melting point. Like 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 it just shows that we are standing up for 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 people who are not able to speak up. So I think for me, like I I feel like you know for our generation, like. Um, we feel a bit more confident to, yes. to um, step up for what we really believe in, which is like truly equality and stuff like that, you know, like things that we don't really talk a lot. And yeah, that's just what I feel. Yeah. Well, um, you know, yeah, the thing is, it's, it's very good that you brought that up because the thing is, I, I'm glad more and more young people are standing up for that, you know, and, and for, for inclusivity and all this. But um, I think the spirit or, or the way that is to be done should should also be, you know, in, in a positive way. And not to put no. down other people, but really just to say, hey, you know, let's take a look at this, you know, in yeah. perspective, right? Not to put the, the, the Chinese guy down, but mm. to try and change his view or, or to give a different perspective to help them, you know, maybe see your point of view as well. Yeah. Um, so it shouldn't be, totally getting, you know, raising the temperature, but, you know, adding your point I to speak, it. But speak, yeah. yeah, you know, and, and I think... Yep. Exactly. So that's, that's where I think we're coming from, you know, to have a proper conversation, to have that respect. And, and interestingly, it was something that uh, there was a conversation between Brian and myself before we came on air, talking about respect itself. You know, I mean, the relationship that I have with Brian is, is one that is of respect. Um, I started in radio and the day I stepped into, you know, SBC at the time and I, I met yep. this guy, Brian Richmond, you know, with the big voice and the deep voice. I'm going, oh my God, there's Brian Richmond, you know. And right. he, he steps up to me and goes, oh, you're Lois Chan, huh? Hey, I like your show. And I'm like, whoa, you know, it's, it's yeah. like, you know me, uh. yeah. Thank you. Right, so, right. you know, and, and, Actually, and from there, yeah. it's always been that. Mm. You know, mm. 
King Wong just now hit the nail on the head when she talked about there are lots of good things in Singapore, lots of good things to be proud of, you know, uh, the positive aspects of Singapore and our way of life. You see, yeah, when, say, out of 10 people, you get one guy who writes something very negative, who complains, you know, and that is, you know, uh, magnified in the newspapers or in, on social media. And everybody looks at it and, yeah, man, these are all complaining Singaporeans. Singaporeans forever complain, complain. But it's only from one guy. Yes. The other nine fellas are really happy and they're happy with the way things are. But just because of this one guy, he makes everybody think that Singaporeans are a bunch of complainers. Am I right? You are, you are absolutely right. I so there is something about the algorithm of yeah, negative. algorithm. Okay, that's yes. one. The other thing that I'd like to also um, agree, Aloysius, you know, I think that I agree with you when you say it is important to say what to be said, but how you say it, and the tone and the words with which you use to say it, you know, it's important. When you say it also is so a lot of times some of these you ask me what are some of the things that we can use to try and maybe make things even better some old-fashioned mantras come into play think before you talk you know um if you don't have anything good to say don't say <laughs> no, okay that's not really true because i agree with yao that a lot of our young people i feel all people older people can learn a lot from how younger people have a, I'm very sensitive to how we can make, how we can listen to all sorts of voices, you know. And I, I love that. I love that, you know. Um, and the way to do it is exactly like what we're doing now. You know, just highlight all the good stuff. You know, in fact, maybe for the future IG lives, right? We should do what there's, I have one favorite podcast called Pop Culture Happy Hour on NPR, right? And they always have this ending um, where every single one of the people that are on it for that show, they, they bring up something that is making them happy. What is making me happy? Maybe, you know, for all the other IG lives, we should, you know, have one section right at the end or right at the beginning where we share something that is making us happy right now. Just like how Yao just shared, you know, what's making him happy right now, you know, yeah. Yeah. New song with Aisha. Go check it out, guys. <laughs> so can I just tell you what? I'm IG living. I'm on my computer and I'm ready to click the thing once this IG live. Oh, man. I've got the last. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> well, actually, here's, here's the thing. We've got a few more minutes. In fact, we passed the 45-minute mark already for our live, our IG live, you know. And um, I think, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank both Kingwa and, and Yao for, for agreeing to, to be on this IG live chat with us and, and to bring along your followers, you know, to, to have, to, to, to be a little bit more aware of what's coming up. And, and I think that's where we, you know, Vintage Radio, what we are, trying to do is to really get the message across to everybody that, you know, um, we should be looking around and, and be a little bit more inclusive. Um, not just, you know, to the elderly or to the older people, but really to the people around us, you know, let's, let's make this a good place that we are happy to grow old in, right? And, and, and help each other because, you know what, we've only got wow. each other. We've only got one life. And, and it is us that, that needs to take ownership, each and every one of us, you know, and, and I hope that message gets across. Um, uh, one thing, though, uh, I, I mean, okay, I do know the people at Universal quite well, and I have the track here. So, Yao, is it okay if we play a little bit of your song? <laughs> I think it should be fine. I think it should be fine, right? Uh, should be fine. I think, yeah, I think yeah, you guys can go ahead. I don't think it would be an issue. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, all right. So I, I've got it keyed up on my laptop here. I'm just going to play it out loud. I'm not sure whether you guys can hear it, but you know, here we go. Oh, it's gorgeous. Um, oh, yeah. goosebumps, thank goosebumps. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well done. Well done. Thank you, thank you. Well, I think that's a nice way to end off uh, the IG session for today. Uh, again, Yao, thank you so much and yes. congratulations on dropping the song. And Ken, thank you, thank you, you so you. much it for was, coming it on. It was great talking to you guys. It was, it was yeah. really nice. Yeah. yeah. And I hope, you know, as, as we move on really um, as much as we can, you know, we should be spreading, you know, the message of, of inclusivity um, all around, you know, not just different races, but really different ages as well. And, and you know, let's, let's, make, let's make this place a better place for everybody. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us. We'll be back again next week for another session. But Yao, congrats again once again. Thank you. And, thank you. and also, King Hua, congrats for, for season two, right? You've been picked up again. Yay. Yay. All right, man. Good night. Have a good Friday. Bye, guys. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye.